Well, the Dow soaring over 700 points last week. Despite a setback on Friday, we ask, will the bulls run again this week? And we bring in Courtney Dominguez, wealth advisor at Payne Capital Management, to discuss. Good morning, Courtney. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So are you optimistic or pessimistic for the week ahead? I'm, I'm very optimistic looking forward here, especially as we continue through the end of the year. All right. We have a lot of retailers reporting, Home Depot, Macy's, mm -hmm. Walmart. Which ones stand out to you and why? You know, we've actually had a really interesting earnings season where almost 80% of companies have beat their earnings estimates this quarter, but that doesn't necessarily mean all of them have traded better. So I think it's going to be interesting, too, to see how it comes out this week, because it's not necessarily are they going to beat their earnings estimates, but also their forward outlook. There's mm -hmm. been a really big increase in the number of companies who have mentioned how the tra tariffs in China are going to affect not necessarily their last quarter, but their next few quarters if that doesn't get resolved. So seeing if there's any sort of market outlook like that and if it's going to affect things, that's really where I'm looking right now, more so than the actual earnings themselves. Well, and that's all Home Depot, right? They oh, have yeah. their appliances, their washing machines are uh, yeah. coming from Korea, are affected by tariffs. Um, also tariffs on Canadian lumber, right? Plus exactly. the slowing and the cooling U.S. housing market. What do you expect to hear from Home Depot? You know, I... I think earnings are expected to actually be pretty good this mm -hmm. forward looking, but what the big thing we're going to look at is at the end of the month here, the U.S. and China are going to meet meeting again. And if we can see some sort of resolution, I think that's really going to forward looking, be able for them to increase their earnings expectations, and that's where we'll really see take off. Right. So I think between now and then, we'll probably see some cautious optimism here, but I am still optimistic of where it's going. And we have no more Toys R Us stores. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Sears and Kmart there closing many locations. Which mm -hmm. retailers do you think stand to benefit from the closing of those stores? Well, I think its biggest competitor is going to be Amazon, right? So I think looking at all of your brick-and-mortar retailers, you might see some of those come out here. Um, Walmart is definitely one of the major ones who's going to stand to benefit, but Amazon is their biggest competitor. So see how their numbers are going to come out comparatively is going to be really interesting to see. Yeah, and finally here, you know, a, a, a the growth stocks are kind of yesterday's news, and, mm -hmm. and investors are pouring their money back into to many uh, value stocks. And some old-school names like Procter & Gamble are doing well recently. What names uh, d do you put your money behind right now? That's a great question. Um, yeah, we like to say there's value and value right now because they really have been underperforming for quite a while here, and we're starting to see those come back around. Um, now, there's, rather than looking at individual companies, I really like to look at the overall markets. Mm -hmm. So value companies, I definitely think, have a lot of room for growth here. But when you looked at October, what you finally saw is the U.S. was going up so far so fast, whereas mm -hmm. the rest of the world wasn't so much. Mm -hmm. started to see people look for value elsewhere. Well, and I think when we're looking over the next year, five years, ten years, there is a lot of value actually overseas. I would say there's a lot more um, cheaper valuations there at the moment. Interesting. Courtney, thank you. There's Thanks value for having in me. value. I <laughs> love it. All right.